Hey guys, Brian from Zombie Guitar here. In this video I want to show you how you can make a backing track which includes drums, bass, keys, synthesizers, and any other instruments you might want to add all on your computer. So you don't even need any live instruments in order to make a backing track. Um, and you can do this for very, very cheap, almost completely free. So I'm going to show you all the free tools that I use and basically just show you the step-by-step -step process that I go through to make a backing track. So. I made a much more in-depth video about this topic uh, about two months ago. I'll put a link to that below. That's about an hour and a half long if you want to really dive into this stuff. But you're going to really learn a lot just from watching this video. So the whole idea is I made up like a chord progression on the guitar, and then I wanted to make a backing track out of it, like a full band backing track, so then I could solo over it with my electric guitar. So the rhythm section just with the guitar sounds like this. So that's going to be the verse and then the uh, the choruses. Kind of a shortened version, but that's the uh, chorus. So it's verse, chorus, verse, chorus. I could put a loop on solo over that for hours on end. So let me show you the um, you know the the backing track version of what I just played right there, and then I'll uh, step by step walk you through exactly how to do this on your computer. So the first thing you want to do is you want to download Reaper, and this is a free program for the first 60 days. And after the 60 days is up, you actually don't have to pay. The program will still work. It'll still be fully functional. But it's such a great program. It is such a it is phenomenal. It is on par with all the other uh, DAWs out there, and it's only 60 bucks. So I mean, support the the uh, guy who made it. He's a he made a phenomenal piece of software. So for 60 bucks, that he doesn't even make you pay if you don't want to. Just pay the 60 bucks. So that's the first thing. Download Reaper. All right, so I'm inside Reaper here, and the first thing we're going to do is to create a drum track. So you can set your BPM up here and set your time signature. So we're going to keep it in 4-4, and we're gonna, I'm going to set this to 100. All right, so these grid lines line up with the BPM. So each of these lines, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. So these are, um, you'll see what we're talking, or what I'm talking about in a minute once we start adding the drums and bass. So let's just start up a creating a new track by double clicking. All right, so we're going to call this drums. Then I'm going to right click and say track color. I'll just give it a, any random color, yellow. Now we're going to add an effects to it, and that's where we find our drum program at. So this, this program right here, MT Power Drum Kit, this is free. So you just open that up, and that is added to this track here. So you come to Grooves. All right, so first we're going to pick an intro. So you could just uh, sample all these. All right, this one right here sounds pretty cool, number 10. So you just click and drag. So this is our intro. So then for the verse, I'm going to do uh, eighth open high or half open hi-hat. So you can sample all these. I like these snare ghost ones. 
So let's try some of these out. All right, I like that groove. So let's pull that to there. So this is one, two, three. So this is giving you room for a, a fill right here. So three and then a fill. So let's try out some of these fills. All right, I like that one. So we'll drag that there. So you can just copy this, control C. And then we'll pick another fill. I'll just pick any random fill and drag it over. All right, and then for the chorus, let me see. I'm gonna do an eighth hit, eighth hit ride. All right, that works. So I'll just pick any random fill, and then I'll pick the same one, or I can just copy that. Doesn't matter. And then I'll pick a different fill. So that's the structure of the song right there. So let's hear that. All right, and then it goes uh, to the chorus. And if I want to change the tempo, I can. It'll adjust automatically. So if I want to change that to like one thirty or something, so I'm just going to leave it at one hundred. All right. So now I have my uh, drum track laid out. I have verse, which lasts this long, and then it's chorus, which that lasts this long, and then we're just going to loop the whole thing over and over. All right, so now we're going to add our bass line. So you come here, you double click to create a new track, call this bass. Right click, give it a color, track color. I'll make this green. All right, so what we're going to do here is paint in MIDI. So what you, how you do that is you hold in control, or if you're on a uh, Mac, you hold in command. Uh, put the cursor to where you want to start. You hold in control, it turns into a pencil like this, and we're going to paint in this em uh, empty MIDI item like so. So that's one, two, three, four bars long. So if you double click on this, it takes you to the piano roll. All right, but we're going to X out of that because we have to select an instrument first. So come to FX. I'm going to use Ample Bass. So they have a free version of this. I'm actually using the paid version, which was about $129, but they have a free version too. It just doesn't have as many features or it doesn't have as many bass sounds. So you can get this program for free. I think it like just has just this sound, which is fine, but I, you know, I like having the options and stuff like that. So I like this sound direct bass. And that is the sound I'm going to select. So now we're going to paint in these MIDI items uh, in the piano roll. So double click. And this takes you to the piano roll. You can hear the different notes. So the progression starts out on an A minor chord. So I'm just going to do an A. And I'm going to make that last one whole bar. So double click, drag it. That's one bar. Do the same thing for an F. You don't have to paint these in every time. You can actually click on one of these, hold in control, and it will copy it. And then you can just move this around. So uh, A minor to F to D. I'll do that D. And then control. Bring this one up to the E. So then I can just copy this, control C, put the cursor there, control V. So that's that baseline there. Um, and then I could do the same thing over here. 
Let me make this baseline a little bit more interesting, though. Let me try something like this. Control, copy this to here. So I kind of like that rhythm. That's cool. So let me copy this. Hit that first note. Hit hold and shift. So it'll copy everything in the row. Now hold and control. You'll get used to these uh, shortcuts too the more you use this program. So this is just easier than painting in all these individual notes. So I'm going to get rid of this here. Delete. Hold and shift. Hold and control. And then delete this one. Hold and shift, hold and control. So let's hear that. Delete this one, copy this. So I'm actually going to keep the same uh, rhythm over here. So I'm going to copy this again. You can actually hold in control. That same trick will work out here too. So hold in control and drag. It'll copy that whole MIDI item. Open this up by double clicking. So this is actually it. Hold in shift. I'm going to bring this down to the note F. I'm going to bring this one up to the note A. So I copied that, and I'm going to bring this part here down to the note at B. I want to actually add an EQ onto this track right here, this bass track. So double click over here. Um, Kakos, that's the Reaper uh, plugins, and they're really good. All of them are very, very good. So uh, Kakos, Rhea, EQ, anything that has Rhea in front of it is a Reaper plugin. So Rhea, EQ. So I select band four, I select uh, low pass, I bring this down to around there, I select band two, and I boost about that much around the 150 hertz region. So let's see how that sounds. So that EQ kind of smooths out some of that. Um, I don't know. I just I think it makes it sound a little better. So without the EQ, and then with the EQ on. All right. So that was just real quick, just making a bass line. So now I want to add a rhythm acoustic part. So if you have an electric acoustic, you can actually just plug your guitar in at this point. You're going to need what is known as an audio interface. The one I use is the uh, Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. So that just uh, connects to your computer via USB. And then you can plug any instruments you have, whether it's acoustic guitar, electric guitar, electric drums, bass, vocal mics, whatever. You just plug it into the interface, and that's how you can get live instruments in here. But I want to show you a way that you can actually get uh, you know, other rhythms without even needing to use any live instruments. So the way you do that is you come over here and there is a website here it's called looper man and you get a bunch of free loops here so you actually have to create a, an account here but it's free and once you create an account you come to loops and samples and uh, there's like a million samples on this so 
you can select a category. I'm going to pick guitar acoustic. I want to pick the key of A minor. So it's going to find me all the guitar acoustic loops that are in this key. So you can just try these out. So there's a bunch of them. So uh, this one actually found 168 of them in this key for acoustic loops. So this is the one I liked. So you just download it. I already did that. So once you do that, you can then open up a new track in Reaper. We'll call this acoustic. Uh, whatever, just call it acoustic. Uh, give it a color. So I'll just make this one blue. And you go to insert media file. And I have this stored in a folder called loops. I already downloaded this. It's, I called it this. So you can either choose to adjust the loop to the project tempo. So this project is set at 100. Or you can set it to uh, not, you know, not just set it to whatever the uh, track already is. So I actually want it to, I do want it to adjust because the track I downloaded is 80 BPM. My uh, project is set to 100 BPM. So I want it to make that adjustment for me. So I'm going to say OK to that. So this, is, this should line up perfectly. All right, so that's sounding good. So let me copy that, paste, and then, so it's, it's the same thing repeated twice. But then when you get to this part, um, this actually is F, the F chord to an A, to an F, to an A, to an F, to an A. So it's still using chords that are part of this. So this is A minor to F to D minor to E. So I can split this up. I can actually just from here to here. And if you turn snap off, it'll allow you to snap in between the grid lines. But if you have snap on, it'll snap right to the grid lines. So let me split it here, here and here. So this is an A minor, this is an F, this is a D minor, and this is an, uh, an E major. So I'm going to take this F chord, copy, control C. I'm going to take this A minor chord, control C. Copy both of those. Copy those again. And then an F. And then the E. This is the E. So copy that. All right, so that whole loop right here is uh, the song. So at this point, your loop is set up. So you have your verse and you have your chorus. So in order to uh, make the loop, you number one, want to make sure that this is on. If it's grayed out, it's off. So you want to have that on. And then you just want to click and drag the area that you want to loop. So anything that you click outside of that, that loop is set. If you want to adjust the size of this loop, you can go like that. If you want to get rid of that, you have to hit escape. All right, so just set your looped area. So that's going to loop. So let's actually hear what this sounds like. So the intro is going to start, and then it's going to play through the whole thing. But then once it starts over again, it's only going to start from the looped area. So let's see how that works. So you see your loop set. So now if you just want to uh, plug your guitar in, then you would just plug your guitar right into your interface and you just create a new track. You can call this lead guitar. You would set your input 
<clears throat> either to input number one or input number two, depending on which slot of your interface you plug into. I always use input number one for my guitar. And then my uh, mic, I always plug into number two. It doesn't matter though. And then I, I can't do this for the purposes of this video because it, it's going to create a feedback loop. I'm actually recording the audio that you hear right now in Audacity. That's how I can do this demonstration of working in this doll. So I can't hit this red button. But if you want to play live guitar, you have to hit this red button so you can hear yourself. And then you would just set, or you would um come to, uh, this is the program I use, S Gear. And this is just amp simulation software. There's other amp simulation software out there. You can do your research on that. But this has like 150 different presets. There's a bunch of different amps. There's delay. There's reverb. There's all kinds of stuff. So, you know, you just plug your guitar in and you jam along with your loop. Put your headphones on, plug your headphones right into your interface. That way no one else can hear and you can sit here and jam all day. So the next thing I always like to do is I like to beef up my drum sound by adding reverb and compression. So this track right here, track number one, it sounds okay the way it is, but it's, uh, it's a very dry sound. This is actually called the dry track. So we're going to add our effects to separate tracks. So we're going to have one track, and we're going to call it drum reverb. So you're going to drag, click and drag here, and you're going to drag the routing over to this track. So you're actually sending the signal from the dry drum track to the reverb track. So then I'm going to add reverb onto this track. So I'm going to pick the Kakos. That's the Reaper Reverberate. Uh, Use that one. I'm going to turn the dry signal all the way down because the dry signal is going to be this. And then I'm going to adjust the wet to zero. So it's right in the middle. If you double click on something, it'll take you right to the middle. I'm going to increase the room size a little bit. So this is your dry drum track, and this is your uh, fully reverbed drum track. So let me turn it all the way down to start. So you can hear the difference when I play it dry. Uh, dry. So that's the first thing. You just add some reverb to it. And you do, uh, you know, you want to put the reverb on another track so you can control them independently. Control your dry signal and then your uh, reverb signal. So you're, you're, you're going to do the same thing for a compressor. So call this uh, drum comp come to effects again rea in the caco section rea comp that's the uh, reaper compressor it's a really good one even though it doesn't look all that high tech it really is a really great compressor so i always just like to set my ratio to like 4.1 so it doesn't have to be exact somewhere 4.23 to 1 and then we're going to be kind of adjusting this with our ears. So let's just start it there. So I still have to send this drum track down to here now. So this, this dry drum track is being sent to the reverb track and this dry drum track is being sent to the compressor track. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm actually gonna, uh, I'll leave the reverb on. So we're just gonna listen to it without compressor. I'm gonna slowly add it in. So I'm not trying to get it perfect. That This is just for uh, demonstration purposes. So let me show you it without the compressor on. All right, and then I'm just going to bring it back into the mix.
So that's just a way to like beef up your drums right there. So I always like to do that. And, you know, you could spend more time really tweaking the compression and the reverb and stuff like that. But I just wanted to give you an idea of, you know, uh, what's what's possible in a DAW like this. So next I want to add in a synth part. So I'm going to double click. I'm going to call this synth. I'm going to give it a color. Right click, track color. Make this pink. I always make synth parts pink for some reason. Let me drag it up here. So, again, I want to uh, just paint in a MIDI note. So, come here, hold in control, and I will paint that one, two, three, four bars. Um, and here's a free synth program. Uh, both of these are free, Tau Baseline and Tau Noisemaker. I'll leave links to this below. Um, so this Tau Noisemaker is a free synthesizer program. It has a bunch of presets. All right, so I have that applied to this track. Let me just paint in my MIDI notes now. So I know that the, it's A. All right, this isn't the sound we're going to use, but you're going to see we're, we're going to be able to change the sound. So it's the first bar is A. Holding control. A to F, and then we'll come up to this. And then E. So that's just our synth part. So let me actually set up a loop here. So come down here and just kind of click and drag. Make that your looped area. Make sure your loop is on. Alright, and then, so now I'm just going to try and find a synth sound that I like. Like that, I'm gonna go with that sound. So I'm gonna hit escape to get rid of that looped area from being highlighted. Um, copy, paste. I'm gonna actually copy and paste again. So I'm gonna open up this one. Then I'm just gonna move this stuff around because this is F to A. Actually, you know what? Let me make this. Yeah, whatever. All right, so copy this one. And then this last note is an E. And I'm actually going to not have the synth part for this first part of the loop. Delete that. And if I come to this corner here, I can actually fade this in. I did that. So let's hear how that sounds. So the loop the looped area wasn't enabled. That's why it started back over from the, from the beginning. So that's that. That's the synth part. Uh, I can go and add like a keyboard part real quick. I'm gonna drag this track up to here. I'm gonna call this keys. Track color. Make this like a blue or something, uh, I don't know, yellow, orange, orange, yeah, we'll make it orange. All right, so keys, 
<clears throat> this is another free program I use. It's called Neo Piano. And every time you open up this program, it always makes you do this. Click on this, click on that. That's my keyboard sound. So I'm just going to add a keyboard for the chorus part. So I'm going to paint in a MIDI, hold in control, paint in some empty MIDI there. Just four bars long. All right. And I'm just going to do some, uh, I want to make sure that my grid set to 16th notes. So this is one bar here. This is one, two, three, four quarter night four quarter notes and then one two three four sixteenth notes so i'm gonna leave it at sixteenth notes and then i'm just going to do arpeggios uh, for each of the uh, chords so the first one is in uh an f chord so i'm going to go f to a to c i'm actually going to copy this hold in shift hold in control hold in control drag this over So, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the A because it's bar number two. It switches to an A minor chord. So A, C, E, C. Hold in shift. Hold in control. And I can actually just copy this whole thing, hold in shift. Once they're all highlighted, hold in control, copy the whole thing. So that should sound like this. Copy this out here, paste, get back into the piano roll. I just want to get rid of this last one here. Hold in shift. Delete all that stuff. So the last one is an E major chord. So E. So E, G sharp, and B. It's an E major chord. So I'll just highlight this area because that's my looped area. I'll start from the beginning. Make sure looping is enabled and let's hear this whole loop now. It. that's your loop so you can keep doing stuff you can add effects to each of these tracks you can mix this um you know mix this uh, add compression add eq to all the tracks you can do all kinds of stuff with this but this is just the you know basics of how you could uh, quickly create a backing track to jam over and just as i said i can't demo this or else it's going to create a feedback loop but if you just want to plug your guitar directly into the computer and jam along to this through your headphones or through your computer monitors or whatever you could do that all right within the doll. Technology is awesome. So I hope you guys liked this video. Thanks for watching.